premiere on the Prima booth and I'm here demoing the new rust paste that just came out from Thinna Bear. Um, I'm really excited about these ones. I actually created a really nice project that showed the three different ones and I'm going to demonstrate how to do them here in the booth. So let's get started. But the nice thing I like about them, oh no, first before I say that, let's talk about the three different ones that exist. We have the military set that comes with three different colors and I'm going to actually take them out to show you. Nice big jars. So what's nice about them, they kind of look like a camouflage military um, uniform and the colors are uh, green gray. This is a, called gray but it's actually a dark green. It's almost like a military green. And the yellow rust and my eyes are like so 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 it's hard for me to see so let's keep them in order because i don't want to get them confused then we have a second set this is the camouflage set and it has lighter colors these colors are kind of like beigey but they still look very similar to the to the other ones so this one has a dark olive which is beautiful there is the Rust, oh no, sorry, this is the color. Dusty. It's kind of like a, I don't know, camel color, yeah. And it's like a taupey color, but it's called, the names are cool. Uh, oh no, this is not a cool name, brown. Oh. <laughs> the names are cool. Some of the other ones are cool. This brown. Is cool. Brown. The names are cool. Brown. Okay. Let's call it caramel brown, shall we? <laughs> caramel brown. And the third one, this is, uh, our, this is actually, I thought it would be my favorite, which it is, it's, I really love it. But when I actually did the three samples, and I actually should bring them from the wall over there. When I did the three samples, the ones that uh, I liked actually more was the, the camouflage one. I don't know why, but maybe it was the technique. The three hands at the top, yeah. So I'll show you the different ones. I've used them in three different ways. So this is the one, and the colors are, I think these have nice names or rusty, which is at least better, dark brown, and green. So here is the three of them. And there's Adam. Say hi to Adam. Hi, hi Adam. Hi, Adam. <laughs> so this is, so this, okay, so let me just remember which one. So this is the camouflage set. Woo, something got stuck in the car. This is the camouflage. So you see how it's lighter colors? I like the fact that it's lighter. But I think it's because the technique I did on this one was the opposite way than what I did with this one, which I added the darker colors first. So you could interchange them. You could add the dark colors first, or you could add the light colors first. And that will give you a different effect. This one is the, hold on, let me just make sure that I don't confuse them. Oh, I wrote them in the back, sorry, never mind. I actually wrote because I thought I would get confused. The military set is this one. They're very close. Yeah, they're very close. And this one is the metal rust set. Yeah, so this is, a, I like the dark green on this one. Now you could, I, I, I think when I, because I blend it a lot, so these you can really blend nicely. You can also use the older sets, like the rust paste and the patina paste, and that will give you even a different effect. So they're all interchangeable. So you can really use them nicely together. So I'm going to put these here, so you guys can see the samples. And I'm going to start, basically adding some metals. I just want to add a few metals. I'm not going to do too much. Yes, fine. But the cool, thing about you, the cool thing about these paste, and this is what I like, is that you don't have to find things. You can. You can add gesso if you want to. But I literally, we did a class in your store, and we went straight onto plastic. And it covered perfectly. Not even a problem. Nothing. There is a lamp there that you see. That was done on metal. And you can't see it on the, in, the, in the video, but it, if you turn there in the floor, there's actually a lamp. And, and it was covered in rust paste, and it actually um, was covered directly. So that's really cool to do. So we're going to okay, so pick a set. Let's pick a set, because we can't just do all of them. Which ones do you guys prefer? How about these? Yeah, this, yes. But which of these three sets do you want oh. to like this one? The dark one, yeah. So that thing came. Oh, this is it. You want the military one? Okay, military. I have these military. Yeah. Yeah. Military is actually no. This one I think is the military. Yeah. This is the the metal rust. That's all right. We can put other things. So you can see that you can put a little bit more green, and it will be like it depends. You can play with the colors and make it the way you like it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to. Are those mechanicals? So these are the new mechanicals. 
the, it's the only one that came out. But tell you the truth, these are new too because I've never seen these before. <laughs> so they're nice. I like these. So and these came out I think in the in the like summer? Yes, I think they came out in the summer. I think I know some of this summer. Okay. And Rika is filming for me, so you can say hi, even though you can't see her face. She's filming for me. Let's pick some of these to make it like nice. Um, so the point of the collage, mixed media collage, is really uh, go to kind of put things together the way I put them over here. And I like putting them close to each other to make a focal point right in the center. Those are our brats. So I want to pick the brat out. Yeah, that would be really nice in the journal. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to layer some. We're not going to do too, too much because I want to show you the effect and I don't want to spend all the time putting metal on the on, on the background. So they also they can also go on resin. You could use them on resin. So this is some of our paper. Uh, sorry, this is not resin. This is clay. Uh, but they can go on resin as well. So this is paper, some of our paper clay. And I thought to use some of this. This would be cool to use as a design. So is it like an air dry clay? It's an air dry clay and they made this earlier. Carrie made this earlier. So I thought let's incorporate this. Something fun. Yeah, I know. This is fun. You know me, um, I like I like doing something crazy. Uh, is that a prima mold? Yeah, that is a new prima mold. Yes, yeah, that's a new prima mold. them I mean this is a demo this is not like perfection or anything like that and I'm not a perfectionist to begin with so it happens to be so silicone brush best thing ever happened in mixed media is a silicone brush and it's really so easy to use for anything almost like a palette knife but you can also use it to spread things on a stencil so I could have made some stencil marks I have some stencils here but I need I mean everybody knows how to stencil so I don't want to show you something that you really know how to do um, let's glue things. And this is the this is the 3D gel that can be used as a glue. So it's a gel medium, but it's a thicker one. So it's really easy to use to glue any type of embellishment on anything. Could be on your journal, could be on a canvas, could be on a scrapbooking page, on a card. I love using it in everything. And this is the chipboard journal you're using. This is the mixed media. So this is a chip. This is chipboard, but this is actually the mixed media book from Prima. I'll show you the front. I'll show you that. It's the mixed media book. It's an A5 in terms of size, and all the pages are very thick, and they're per perfectly for doing like our journal with a lot of mixed media products. So a lot of our mixed media products are very thick. We came up with uh, more mixed media products besides the page. There is something called the paper paste. It's kind of like a paper texture, and we also have a new one. It's a plaster paste. Which is more like plaster you're taking. Yeah. She asked this. Uh, this is try this with my Rika. Hi, Rika. Mm, hello. Thank, Thank you so, so much for such a fun. Uh, so, she says, we're so good. Yeah, so, I came in here so okay. This. The nice thing about this kind of in whatever I've signed up for. It holds really well. It holds better than a silicone person on your feet. And then you open it up and it goes down. Right. As you start talking, we were all like, what is that? It takes longer to dry. So what I do sometimes as a trick. Uh, I use a glue gun along with this, so the glue gun will hold it in place, but this will be permanent. Really, really, really and then it helps to do that that way. You then you have like that permanent. So you're really getting some uh, dimension on that glue. You're really packing it in there That's because right. the hole is not you're flat really on the bottom. The right. So that's also what you want to do is you want to make sure that this sticks well. And these metals are heavy. They're, you have to make sure that they, they stay they stay put. So you don't want to lift this up and the whole thing dropping on you, right? So when you're assembling anything with collage, you want to make sure that you're using a strong adhesive. You have to. That's really, really important. I think I want to move this over here. And you can change your mind. You see, I, I am doing this and then I change my mind of what I, where I want things. 
it's my projects, my design. I always tell people, be creative, do what you like. I mean, you have to follow certain formulas on things, especially with gesso and other things and other like mediums. I think you need to know what they are for. You need to know that gel medium is to glue or to use through a stencil, but then you, know, you cannot use it to cover something because it's not. Gesso will cover while, while gel medium will not. So that's the key to that. I want it with, I want, so I like going sideways and up in terms of like my design. So the silicone brush would last a lot longer than a foam brush because those foam brushes just disintegrate. This all you do is literally you take a wipe. That's a good question. So all you do is you take a wipe and wipe it off and it comes off easily. I, I will do it at the end just because I want to finish putting this on and I will show you. Um, where do I want? See, I changed my mind. I don't always. Did I glue this one already? I don't always want things in the same position. Hmm. Oh, this one is not good. Okay. So what I like doing is, you see how there's like glue everywhere here. So a good trick to do is to use a paintbrush. And always pick the same paintbrush because when glue gets on a paintbrush, it will it will damage it. But what you want to do is you want to yeah. You, oh, thank you. Yes, water. I forgot about water. Uh, is to clean up the the glue. You know what I mean? You can clean up the edges to make sure that you don't get that glob at this side. Thank you, Rika. Just to smooth it out. To smooth it out. This is matte gel, so it will not show, and you're gonna be. I'm gonna be covering this, so you will not see it. But if you have that gloppiness everywhere, what's going to happen is that that's gonna be an embellishment. It's gonna become an embellishment, and you don't want an embellishment that does not belong. So I just tend to just kind of smooth it out or wipe it off if you have too much. And then I clean it every, see I clean up all the embellishments to make sure that everything is smooth. Here, I'm gonna have you, Leanne, you stand here and I always have helpers. So start drying because it, it wastes too much time on the drying part and I want to show you how the rust paste works. So I have my assistant here. Okay, so I'm cleaning this up. And I want to show you, you wanted to see how the silicone brush see what thing. So once I am, it wipes off so easily from the thing, from the, on the pot. All I do is I just fix it. It's all clean. And it's just so easy to use. And it lasts for a long time. And through stencils, and just to show you, I want to show you on, on a stencil. I'm just going to show you quickly. You could use this on a stencil. You could use any type of product. But all you do you the corner here. See, it just smoothly goes on a stencil. So you know what I mean? Like you can use this so easily to add more dimension. To I didn't do this just because I figure everybody knows, but I just want to show you how to use the silicone brush. It's it's one of my favorite tools. It came out last year. Really, really worth getting if you have it. Okay, so let's go. Should we add this? Should we? No, no, we need to dry it off. Just in there. Yeah. That's okay. I'm just getting hot, that's all. But that's the little flower here. Oh, that one? Yes, this is the ranger. This is the ranger. It's, uh, this is what it is. So, so people, I have this at home, and what it's nice is because it's very quiet. You don't hear it at night. So if like, you're scrapping at night and, and you know there's people like you know sleeping at midnight or even in, in even in crops and you're like heating everything up and it's too many people yeah that is not fun so imagine everybody turning it on at the same time or even you're going to a class like everybody has to be you go to an experience class you need to bring a heat tool so they just don't want to touch this Okay, so we're gonna open up. Who wants 
So we have the three colors. So this is a military kit. I love that green. It says gray, but it really looks like an army uniform. And I'm going to show it to you. So we'll start from the edges because I'm going to paint it all. And I'm trying to debate because in this one, I, when I did a military set in this one, I actually started with the dark color. I put the dark color first. But today I'm going to show you the backward buttons. Techniques the other way around. You can do two different things. You could start using just the dark colors and then add highlights with the lighter colors. Or you could use the light colors and then and, and then add shadows with the darker colors, if that makes sense. So let's see. I'm going to borrow one of these. Because I don't have a bigger one. So I want to start with the light one. I'm going to, to see how it applies so easily. The nice thing about it, it also has the texture. It's really hard. It's really gritty. You can't see it in your thing, but it actually looks like rust. Like if you think of it something rusty, this is it. Rusty, rusty color. Oh yes. You see how now I'm covering the metal? And it covers the whole metal. I'm trying not to move it too much because I think it's still a little bit loose. But this is what I like. Is that it covers so nicely. It gives such a good coverage, and I don't even have to prime it with the gesso. It's really, really good. Like it's a, it's it's a paste that really makes a difference. Like you really you don't have to do much. It basically gives it a huge cover. You see, it covered already this side. Oops. And this starts here. Yeah, I'm even using it on the metal. And I'm just dabbing it. I want to make sure that I, I want to make sure that <laughs> right. Also that, and also my, it's not fully dry. It's, so I want to get into all the crevices. Yes, but I also want to make sure to be careful that it doesn't this. move because I actually did not. It's not dry properly. Now you can use a light layer just to go on the edges. I don't want to like waste too much of it. But it's just beautiful. Look at that. It's just a beautiful color. Maybe I should work on a smaller surface. See, Rika did some really nice tags I want to show you. You did a really nice tag. Yeah, there's the cover as well. The book yeah. cover. Well, okay, so she did. She tagged. I could have done it in a smaller surface like this, right? That maybe would have covered it, but it's okay. But this, this is. is can you want to talk about? Maybe Rika can talk about this one in the meantime. This is the paper. Is it the paper? Uh, There's two. Uh, the bo bottom is the plaster paste, which oh, is new, sorry. and oh. the paper texture paste is used through the stencil here. So the paper texture paste is almost like liquid paper in a jar. So it's really handmade paper oh, kind wow. of look. It's really it's gorgeous. Yeah, I'm gonna show, I think I'm going to demo that tomorrow. So, so you have a plaster paint? There's a plaster paste and paste. a paper paste. They're both oh, paste. Can I so again they're new, they're move new, this over new, so yeah. I paste. have actually samples of the two pastes? I'd love to oh, see yes, it. Yes, yes. Rika will get. Yeah, she can show you the two. And she lost her voice, so I apologize. She can't talk very loud, but I'll I'll say it louder for her. In the meantime, I'm just painting. The reason why I'm doing something else is because I'm just basically almost painting the lighter color, and then I'm going to show you how to add the shadows and the highlights. But because it's taking me a little bit longer to paint, we want to show you as much as we can on this video. Did you find it? Oh, I found a little pieces. Oh, okay. So here now you can see a finished, beautiful finished piece. That looks like the rust, metal rust paste. So yeah, it's sticking. She did an amazing. Yeah, so this see? Oh, wow. this is what this is going to be. Gorgeous. This is gorgeous. This is combining all three sets. Mm -hmm. I went rogue and mixed it all up. But in these little pieces, they are separately. So that's metal rust there. That's military. And that's camouflage. Right, so this is. I'm gonna hold the book up a little bit. Yes, so do that. Just there. Yeah. So this is. Yeah. So this is how it will turn out. You see this dripping? She's working, but I think she put rust, uh, red rust in this too, right? There's no red rust in this one. No. No. Wow. Yeah, this looks, looks like, like red rust. 
Yeah, it's our one. Oh, it's this uh, one. It's the rusty. Wow. It yeah. looks like the other rest, red rust. Okay. I want to combine that too. And here's the from the new this is the plaster you paste. always make sure you get 100% okay. coverage on you. Sometimes these pieces of the metal so the showing. Plaster's thicker? It's, yeah, I think it's, it's, I think it's because it was a demo. It's thicker feel? It's heavy. No, I mean, it's it's easy. Purposely yeah. sometimes. Yes. You could. You could definitely use, you, you can definitely do that. Oh, you see, nice. it looks good because it looks, yeah. but when you're looking at something up. rusting in real life, mm -hmm. you're trying to mimic a rusted nice. look because you don't want to get like disease from the rust, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you're trying to mimic that Fresh with colors. art. Mm -hmm. So to do that, if you look at something rusty, you do see metal underneath yes. it. You do see, yeah, so it, it makes a difference to have that. So yeah, you can show some of the metal. That I think will looks nice. And you know what? As you're adding more and more layers, the metal starts hiding underneath because you're adding more and more layers and more layers and more layers and Rika needs to, you need to go get a tea, Rika needs to go get a tea. The poor girl, she lost her whole voice. They don't have tea here, they only have coffee. Yeah. I've asked three places and uh, only coffee. I, can't believe I don't I drink don't coffee. Glad, glad please. tea. Okay, so, okay, so I think I'm gonna start adding mm, the yellow a little bit. So I'm really, okay, I'll wash it. I'm really bad and I do mix colors that. in between. No, that was for, this is oh. my drink, yeah. This is for my brush, that was not for drinking. But I'm, I'm just really- I want you to get green tea. Yeah, so I'm really bad at, I, I tend to mix, but I am not going to do that today. And what I like about this is that they blend so nicely together and they start blending with each other. And you'll see once I start putting the darker color, it's gonna look so cool. That and makes everything everything is moving. Yeah, I know. It's like so annoying when it moves, but it's okay. It eventually dries up. So you see when you when you you can did I just get paint on my nose? You can get you can get you can you see how it highlights all the crevices and it, it, it makes it pop up. So you get all those texture you're you're getting just with a little bit of a lighter color. Thank you, Rika. Okay, so... Oh, she got a coffee. So I like adding the different colors together. Now, hold on, I want to put that thing. I want to add a little bit more yellow here. And the nice thing about it is that you can combine the colors. You can have a little bit of yellow, a little bit of green. I mean, there's no rule. This is what I like about mixed media, there's no rules. Mm -hmm. With card making and scrapbooking, which I was scrapbooking for many, many years, there's a lot of rules. You have to be like exact, you have to measure, like, and I have I know, patience in that. I don't have patience <laughs> measuring. That's my problem. Okay. How long does this stay wet to allow the blending together easily? Touch here. Dry. It's dry. It's already dry. It dries really quickly. That's why you should also always close these really fast after because they tend to... Uh, so when you're not doing a demo? When you're not doing a demo. At home, when you're using these, make sure that you close them. Like, make sure you close them. Could you mist your project with a light mist of water to help you blend the colors? Yes. So they, they blend really nicely with water. I have done that. <laughs> okay. This is quiet. You know how hot this is? Yeah. This thing burns you if you put your hand underneath it. It really, really does. So you see that? Yeah, I can call that thing. So uh, what I'm uh, so yes, they blend. If I had a, I don't have a spray bottle here, but even like even if like you see, look, I have this wet, right? Look, it blends really nicely with water, and it helps you blend different things. Now what I want to show you is how I'm going to include the dark, the dark color. So this is one of my techniques that I really like to do. And let me close the gel as well. It should be good. It's okay. You're okay. You can do so what I want to show you is now we're going to add the shadows. So usually in Fix Media you can do like add the dark colors first and then do the highlights with the light colors. I'm going to do it kind of backwards because it's, I just want to show you there's different ways of doing it. But to add the shadows, think of where the shadows usually are. Shadows are usually underneath embellishments, underneath things. So you want to add them underneath. You don't want to cover your embellishment. So I kind of start adding the shadow 
underneath, in between the embellishments, and then I'm going to blend it with the other color. Because that looks weird. I know. <laughs> but it does, you see, as I go, I start bringing it out and blending it with the other colors. So what happens is it looks that the, the shadow is underneath and all the light stuff is on top. And it really makes a difference. And again, yes, you're right. You know what? If it dries up, you could wet it and it helps you blend the colors. And it's, you see how it's taking form? The more you blend, the easier it is, the easier it will look. That yellow mustard color really is bringing out the rusty look. Yes, the, the rustiness. So the original one, the actual, the red rust that came in the set, in the first set, it's beautiful. It comes with a red rust, it comes with dark brown, and it comes with a yellowish like this. And the three of them together are some of my favorites. If you see that, you see that light bulb? Yeah, you see that light bulb? That, uh, that's one of my projects. And this is this was made with the red rust. You see, like this is the yellow, this is a yellow rust. This is another set. This is the original set. And there's three different colors in it. So you, there's three, so many different rust paints that you can use and create these really cool rust effects. And I just blend and blend until I like it. So you continue blending until you like it. Thank you. And now I go back. So for example, I want some more yellow here, right? Because this is the, uh, the highlights, you got it. You see now, perfect. Now people understand. Getting it. So then, perfect. Right, so there, and you continue blending until you're happy with how it looks. You can continue blending and you're gonna get that rusty effect. Now, we could go like Rika did and come add some red in it. How cool is that? I mean, this is a different set, so you would have to purchase both. That's why I like staying within the set, because sometimes people don't want to purchase every single one, right? But I want all of them. <laughs> so you could add redness mm -hmm. into this, and look, it gives it a different effect. Another I different, like that. yeah, a different rusty yeah, effect. Yes. Yeah. So I like even look a little bit, just a little bit of dabbing, and it mm -hmm. creates a different look altogether. And, and the a cool rough texture too. Yes. And imagine if you brought in turquoise into this, okay? There's a patina turquoise mm -hmm. one, oh which my. I thought I had, but I'm not sure if I do. I thought I had it in my, in my, yeah. If you put some turquoise, but I do like this combination. I do actually like this combination of. It is so gorgeous. Yeah. So it really looks nice. And I'm going to have, maybe we will have Rita bring the one, a little bit of the waxes because they look that changes the look. It changes so the look much. completely. Really completely. And we could like still go. Uh, do I want a different dark green? You know, like I could do, use a different dark green and include that. Or I could, but I don't want to. I don't like messing with too too many colors because mm -hmm. it just makes it too busy and yeah, does it loses the effect. But for example, I feel like I'm missing some of the darkness here. So I just. Go ahead and add it. You see, you can mix it back in. If you don't like it, you cover it. This is what I like about mixed media. You can cover anything. You, there's no there's no right or wrong. You can just cover things and make them look how you like them. Oh, yeah. yes. You're yes. coming? Oh, okay. absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Toronto? Yes. <laughs> She's like, no, yeah. We're going to be there. Okay. And we're going to bring Kathy over to the other side. Yep. Yes. I'm not really a mixed media person. Nobody is. Nobody thinks he is. But they are. But and then they start fun. experimenting and it's just like so it's easy for like kindergarten. Yes. Mixed yeah. media is like kindergarten. That's basically what I find. So when you're afraid to put color down. Oh yeah, you are afraid. <laughs> so this is nice. Totally now. Do this. I want to bring. Okay. Wait, don't go. Show this. I'm going to show you something really cool. Okay. We're ready. take it off the wall. The waxes are amazing. The waxes are Okay, so the wax is one of my favorite products from last year. Really innovative. I love it. This is, you're going to go like, wow. I mean, I'm sure people online have seen it already. 
Okay. Any questions there online? There, somewhere talking. I don't know. Everybody's I'm... saying it's beautiful. Okay. Beautiful okay. colors. No questions. No questions. If anybody has. Okay, I'm just drying it a little bit because I don't want the wax to mix. Okay. So what is nice with the wax? There's different ways of using it. I like using it. Hey, Gary. I like using it with my finger. Okay. And sorry, not have enough. And it creates a oh. really subtle look, highlights to any project. However, this year we came out with stipple brushes. Ooh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so, so you can. Oops. Oh, you know what? It dried up. I apologize. It dried up. I'm just. The stipple brush dried up. And you should do that. I love the smell. The smell of the wax is mm. really good too. <laughs> okay, there we go. So, still a little bit wet. Hold on. So, is it adding a light shimmer? It adds a beautiful light shimmer. There's many colors of this. this is, my favorite is this one, which is the vintage gold. It, it could, like, you could also get coverage with it. People have covered a whole. Oh, people have covered a. Oh, uh, a, a whole like background with it. You could just use a stipple brush and use a bunch of the wax colors. There's lots of colors with that, and and you could go. And it gives it that really nice. See? See again? It's changed the look of it. Yeah, it changes Love the look. It. Yeah, it changes the look of it. And it's one of it's really one of my favorites, especially for something that has like a really nice texture. Mm -hmm. So it really makes a difference. The whole thing is just turning out so gorgeous. It, it does look like there's nothing that you started off with. No. I know. So that's why I like about mixed media. This is what I like. My favorite are the rust paste. And it's just basically blending them. You don't have you don't have to do it is not much effort. It's not difficult. You don't have to get stressed out that it will not work out because you can always uh, fix it. You know, there's always places to add more let's take uh, all you do is you take a wipe and you remove some of it and it just looks amazing. So that is basically my cover for this journal. I could put a title here. I just don't have a title, but this is the cover. Just a little bit. Yes, yes so I'm going to lift it up. It's beautiful. But this is the cover for this journal. Oh, I love the colors. Yeah, so, so we're going to do something. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's beautiful, Karen. <laughs> Love it. Thank you. Would you do that for a class, Karen? Or yes. Of yes. We're doing a bye, everyone. <laughs> you can turn it off. <laughs> no, no, you just have to like actually. Well, let me see. Ah, bye, everyone. Oh, oh, that's somebody else's face. Oh, hold on. Let me just finish this. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much.